Uh, good morning and welcome to We're Burning Daylight. Let's just jump right into the Word of God this morning as we begin this work week. We're looking at Joshua chapter 7 and we began reading there in verse 1. It says, But the people of Israel broke faith in regard to the devoted things. For Achan, the son of Carmi, and son of Zabdi, son of Zerai, the tribe of Judah, took some of the devoted things. And the anger of the Lord burned against the people of Israel. Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai near uh, Beth Haven, east of Bethel, and said to them, Go up and spy out the land. And the men went up and spied out Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not have all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and attack Ai. Do not make the whole people toil up there, for they are a few. So about 3,000 men went up from the people, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai killed about 36, 36 of their men and chased them before the gate as far as Sherebim and struck them at the descent. And the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth and on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening, and he and the elders of Israel. And they put dust on their heads, and Joshua said, Alas, O Lord, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all to give us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? Would that we have been content to dwell beyond the Jordan? O Lord, what can I say when Israel has turned their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear of it and will surround us and cut your name, cut off your name from the earth. What will you do for your great name? Oh, hallelujah. Let us move over quickly into the New Covenant, New Testament. We're going to pick up reading here. Uh, we're talking about the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ in chapter 23. I'm going to read a few verses and then jump towards the end of it. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man uh, misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, What are, are you the king of the Jews? And he answered, You have said so, I like that. You have said so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and crowds, I find no guilt in this man. But they went, but they were urgent, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching them throughout all Judea, from Galilee, even, even to this place. As, as I said, let us move over uh, to the end of this chapter, beginning in verse 26. We continue reading. As they led him away, they seized one Simon Serene, of Serene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And they followed him, a great multitude of people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that had never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things, when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others who were criminals were led away to put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, uh, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals who were hanged, railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due rewards of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. 
And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. I want to pick up one more piece of our of our assigned reading today in the book of 2 Corinthians. There in chapter 7, we're going to look in verse 2 and begin there. Make room in your hearts for us, for we wrong no one. We have uh, corrupted no one. We have taken advantage of no one. I do not say this to condemn you, for I said before you are in our hearts to die together and to live together. I am acting with great boldness toward you. I, and have great pride in you. I am filled with comfort in all affliction. I am overflowing with joy. For even when we came into Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were afflicted at every turn. But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the, com by the coming of Titus, and not only by his coming, but also by the comfort with which he was comforted by you, as he told you of your longing, your mourning, your zeal for me, so I rejoice still more. For even if I made you grieve with my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it, for I see that the letter grieved you, though once only for a while. As it is, I rejoice, not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting, for you felt a godly grief, so that you suffered no loss through us." For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. For we foresee what earnestness this godly grief has produced in you, but also what eagerness to clear yourself with indignation, what fear, what longing, what zeal, what punishment. At every point you have proved yourself innocent in the matter. So although I wrote to you, it was not for the sake that one who did the wrong, not for the sake of the one who suffered the wrong, but in order that your earnestness for us might be revealed to you in the sight of God. Therefore, we are comforted, and besides uh, our own comfort, we rejoice still more at the joy of Titus, because his spirit had been refreshed by you all. For whatever boast I made to you, him about you, I was not put to shame. But just as everything we said to you was true, so also our boasting before Titus has proved true. And his affliction for you is even greater as he remembers the obedience of you all, how you received him with fear and trembling. I rejoice because I have complete confidence in you. What an amazing passage of scripture that we have just uh, included in this morning's assignment. We do move into our devotion today and bring all this together as, as we read the revelation that the Holy Spirit has stirred up in the heart and in the mind of Dick Brogdon. Thank you again, Dick, for allowing us to read this each and every morning throughout the work week. Live dead joy, uh, glorious confession. When Achan sinned, Joshua strangely exhorted him to give glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession to him. That was in verse 19. Achan had sinned grievously and would die for his sin because his disobedience brought disaster on the congregation. Yet, there was still a place to glorify God by admitting his sin. God is glorified in many ways, and one is when we confess our sins. When we confess our sins, we bring them into light, and light, truth, is the exclusive domain of God. Truth honors God. Jesus' self-confession of deity and authority, likewise, was glorious. Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus confessed. It is as you say. It is so. Jesus continually and progressively bore witness to himself. There is no shame in God declaring to be God. We need not wince when we read that Jesus bore witness of himself. This is the right of deity. People look foolish when they exalt themselves. But God is diminished when he does not. It is glory for God to declare his own name. Our glory is in confessing that we are not God. <clears throat> Excuse me. When we, criminals that we are, admit that we are justly condemned, we glorify God by participating in his truth. There is no shame in accepting or proclaiming our true human nature. This, too, is our glory. 
Likewise, when fallen people confess that Jesus is God, as in Luke 23, 47, certainly this was a righteous man. He is glorified. 2 Corinthians 7, 9 through 11, our last portion of reading today, explains the benefit of confession. It brings our weakness and depravity and sin into light. There is an appropriate sorrow both for us and for those who are afflicted by our sin. When we sorrow in a godly manner, we repent. Repentance leads to redemption and redemption to relief. Verse 11 is a bolt from heaven. Hear this. For observe this very thing, that you sorrowed in a godly manner, what diligence it produced in you, what clearing of yourselves. Sin breeds sorrow. When this sorrow leads to confession, it is godly. Confession results in clearing. How glorious it is to be free from guilt and shame. Hear this this morning. The devil's lie is that hiding sin holds shame at bay. The truth is, is that unconfessed sin is raging sin, and it destroys from within. Confessed sin opens the portals of heaven into our darkness, and the result is that light and glory overwhelmed the shame. Confession is our glory, for it lifts our heads and it eradicates shame. It is glorious to confess sin. Amen. It is glorious to confess who Jesus is. It is glorious for Jesus to bear witness of himself. Let us not miss out on the glory of confession. Today, if there is anything that you need to bring before the Lord Jesus and confess before him, know that he is faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse of all unrighteousness. This is Pastor Bobby. Thank you for being with us this morning. We pray that you heard this word, you received this word, and that you apply this word to your life today. And then share it with someone on your social media platform. Until we uh, read again, this is Pastor Bobby again on We're Burning Daylight.